everybody. So uh, we're getting close to lambing. I'm excited. I've got a protein tub that I'm going to put out in probably two weeks. A protein tub? What's yeah, that? so it's like a, it's like this big yellow bucket, and they've got, uh, I don't know, the protein source. Okay. It, it might be alfalfa. But it might already, be soy. There's already stuff in it? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's something that they can lick up protein. And in the last parts of their pregnancy, they, uh, they still need um, a lot of nutrients, uh -oh. but they don't have the room for it. Okay. So, so it's usually at the end of the pregnancy, so you'll give them a more, more concentrated more feed okay. where it's like for every pound of feed, there's a lot more energy in that food. So what they could normally get by on grass hay that time, it might be beneficial for me to have that protein lick. Like in their pen, so she's almost full, but she can get a few licks, and that'll get her make sure she's getting enough protein. If we convert that to pigeons, is is there any uh, is there any um, correlation you can see? Yeah, I mean, I've got I've got a an idea in my head of when the birds need rich food and when they don't. I have my breeding loft, but there's only one bowl with eggs or with babies okay the rest of the pairs are either uh they're either driving hens or they're sitting on eggs with no babies and those birds in the breeding loft they have the diet mix except for the bull with babies if the babies hatched i think the mom and dad need a little more full leaded the real deal would you the premium food? Would you put that food like in their nesting box, or yeah. would you still okay? So you I've done handful it into yeah. That box has a little cup, and they get the breeding mix, where the rest of the box, the rest of the loft gets maintenance mix. Maintenance mix. That, that makes sense. But that's that's when they need it is when they got those babies, but they don't need it to sit. Nah. During no. the racing season, you would no. say that's perfect. Your bird's resting. Yeah. It's building up fat Energy's reserves. Going. Mm -hmm. And if that's true, you don't need to give him the rich food. No, nope. he's not working unless you're training him hard or her hard. Yep, racing you season. Watch that. Yeah, there's a race mix for that. Um, I told you at my place, and I don't know if it's on one of the videos, but I noticed like I would put you know my scoop for I've got all the babies, everyone's pumping everybody, everybody's doing you know babies are getting fed. We call that pumping, and uh, I scoop up a big scoop, put it in there. Those first things that they eat, which is all the good stuff, they'll run over and feed that to the babies. I'm a little heavy on the wheat right now. So then they come back to feed themselves, and that's all they're getting is the wheat. So I've been trying to, when I'm there, mm. manage and let them have, hey, here's some more. Here's a little more corn. Here's a little more. I want them to eat everything. I don't want to sit around the loft. That's how you get rodents pretty fast. But, but yeah. I don't want the poor dad who's pumping babies to just try to live off of wheat. So I'll try to do something a little different in that. Are you, so what are you doing? Are you giving them more of the same mix or do you have a, a second no, mix? No, thank you. No, I'll have a little second mix that has just the peas, the wheat, this Milo, the millet, huh. red and white millet, some, some of that stuff. I would almost think you would want to put that mix down first. Well, the first one I give Get them has that mixed in. And uh, so let's say, I don't know, it's like... Uh, I just have a lot of wheat, and I, I'm and I'm cheap, so I'm mixing that wheat. We'll say thirty percent, twenty twenty to thirty percent wheat in there with with that good mix. But the first ones, as they as you know, as all those breeders come down, they're grabbing all those little good yummy seeds and going to feed the babies, and then getting enough for themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. I mean, it, you want the babies, you want the babies to get the best, right? Yeah. So it's good in one way, but in the other way, you don't want to leave the parent without. I think, uh, yeah, I think in the wild, maybe, uh, I don't know. In my mind, mom, it's dad's turn to feed. He flies out there, fills up with stuff. He comes back, pumps babies. It's still not his turn to sit, so he's going to fly back out there, get some stuff for him, and now he's good for the day. That's my thinking. And if he's like, crack, I, I have to crap, I've got to go. Just next door where the wheat is, that's the only thing I'm going to eat myself. Maybe he doesn't last or doesn't uh, 
mm. it doesn't feel as good on it. It doesn't. No. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe the uh, the cheap mix should be saved for your non breeding birds. True. But still, even if I put the rich in there, let's say that the, there's still weed in there, right? So unless I overfeed. Not 33%. True. That's true. I'd say uh, less than 10. But unless I overfeed, then that the, the, the birds that are feeding babies are always going to take those first, the first choices. To, now, I guess if you were to feed, have dividing feeders where they have, you have all wheat, all soft flour, all pellets, all whatever. Now the bird can come and get what he wants. You probably don't have that problem because you can that fill those it. up. You would never, birds would never show up at the wheat feeder or the barley <laughs> feeder. They'd be like, you see they've got corn over here? And they're like, hey, uh, you got any of that fry sauce for this wheat? It's like yeah. going to the buffet and <laughs> exactly. expecting someone to get salad. You're like, why is all the stuff salad? salad? Why would I? It's a, it's a good thought because the breeding mix, in my mind, is like the richest mix. But there's always the favorite grains. Yeah. That go to the baby because they will pump the babies and then they'll go back for seconds. Yeah. And seconds is just what's left. It might be good stuff. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you got it. But it's not it's what they would have preferred. Whatever's left. I have seen at different stages of the babies. Like at the very beginning, it looks like to me they're not they're not eating a lot of corn. They're you know, they're eating a lot of small seeds. And then later on, maybe they are eating a lot of the corn. And so there is there must be stages that, that mom and dad understand that babies need this somehow or like in the beginning it's milk yeah and then they start giving them the regurgitated grains yeah as i've picked up little tiny baby ones I hardly ever have i felt a whole kernel of corn in a real small baby i've seen them no. at the next stable where the where the feathers are or something of that nature yeah right? that's when they start putting seeds in them yeah as i think about how the parents give the best grains to the baby I wonder if it's a feature and not a bug. I wonder if that's the best thing that could happen. I've heard people say you don't want your hens to get too fat or yeah. they'll be less likely to have fertile eggs. True. And you, people might say the same thing about a fat, uh, big fat cock. Won't be able to tread his hen as well or connect the dots as no, well. That's, that's probably true too. So maybe, There's always a balance. Maybe it's ideal that the best go to the baby while it needs it. And the parents get enough, just enough, enough to keep them going. Yeah, they don't whatever. need they don't need to grow. We, in the conversation we started, the thoughts were that the cox give he gets taxed pretty hard because he ends up having to pump both the babies. He gets he gets run down pretty good. Mom's sitting on eggs, at least for the yeah. Big he's portion definitely got that cycle. He's got as a, soon as those babies are weaned, he's like resting and yeah. then enjoying that break. I bet. What about grit? I notice um, my birds will pick up a lot of grit before they lay eggs. Um, and then with the babies, as the babies get older, I see them picking up grit. But I don't see a lot. Of, I, they don't seem to go through a ton of grit in that middle stage, like after the babies hatch and whatever. I'm, I'm not saying you won't have them still going to get grit. I'm just saying it doesn't seem like they're eating as much of that. Hmm. But beforehand, it seems like, boy, they want that calcium. And they know they can find it over there. Yeah, seems I've, like it. I've noticed birds seek out the grid or the, uh, some salt more often. Different times. Before they're laying eggs. But I don't know if I've noticed the drop off in the next spike that you've noticed. But definitely like as eggs are coming, those hens are like looking for it. Yeah. And the reason I notice is because I'll try to refresh my, my grit a couple times a week. <clears throat> grit doesn't like to just be sitting around. But I'll try to refresh it a couple times a week. And there are, when I, when I refresh that and they're all either just sitting on eggs or before the eggs hatch, it look, it, they, they'll go over to that, gr they'll go over to the grit before they'll go to the feed when I refresh it. Are you giving that good grit? I am. They love that. Gotta do grit. it every time. Yeah. They love that stuff. We're not sponsored, so we can't say the name. No. Nope. Wish we could. It's, Maybe next time. It's a mix of about a million things and it smells like hot chocolate mix. It's delicious. It doesn't taste that good, <laughs> but it smells just like hot cocoa mix. They put those seeds in there. That drives them nuts, little buggers. Yeah. But, and then, and then, and then, as the birds get older, I see them go back. As the the chicks get older, I'll see them go back to the grid again for a while. It, 
again, I just see heavier use. Yeah, I wonder if from my same scoop that I use. As the babies transition from milk to grain. Yeah, I, I wonder think so. if mom and dad are like they don't know where to get grit, so I got to put grit in my babies. I wonder if the milk they whatever they're picking up from the grit is also being processed in the milk at the very beginning, and that may be why that surge is, or it could just be because she's making um, gonna make a new eggshell, or you know what I mean. There's there's yeah. many reasons why we might think that's why without a scientific know how, without proving it. Yeah. I found something else that was cool to do. With what? Um, I heard in, in Europe, the, the people there use a lot of straw in their laws. So on the floor, they'll put straw down. Huh. And they'll say that the babies love to just be on that straw when they're newly weaned. So I didn't have any straw. I don't like particularly like straw. It gets slippery, slimy, messy. But I had a whole bunch of pine needles. So I coated the one floor with pine needles. My new babies that are weaning, they'll go down there. and They're like chickens. They'll fluff in it. They'll sit with their peck. It, they look happy. They like it, huh? Yeah, and I put, I mean, I, it's a good three inches huh. of pine needle in there. I'm hoping over time when they, you know, how they sit on the roost and it'll get messy under a roost and not dry, I can just take out the pine needles. In the summer, it's not necessary because everything dries. But here in the winter in Utah, that, that everything stays Springtime is weird. Yeah, All the winter wet. droppings that were frozen mm -hmm. are now thawing out, and it's just wet. Yeah. The yeah. little bot springtime flies is when or I whatever clean. coming next. Yeah, springtime is when I clean out my loft, get those piles out from under the perches. Yeah, smart. And then once it's dry, it's dry. Yeah. But this springtime is weird. I finally am seeing eggs again after my ha my cat attack. Oh, that's good. You know if they're... Just today, I got an egg. Are they fertile? They will be. That's good. I went and wrote on some of my eggs about three days ago, so I'll candle them again tonight. And if it's still blank, out it goes. I should have done it sooner, but. Is that fun to do? You like candling do. them, don't you? Yeah. I, I haven't done it in years, but it is kind of fun. I just hate waiting. So she's 10 days, then she lays the egg, and then what? Is it going to be another 18 days before she decides to give up? If it's So you've wasted uh, yeah, a whole know. dang month when if you could have caught it at least. How often are your eggs clear? Oh, I got quite a few. I don't have them. I got quite that a old few. boy I experimented with, mm -hmm. that Jan Arden. Yeah, his eggs were always clear. Yeah, <laughs> he'd be a good one to be selling the eggs from. Yeah, Easter's coming to eat. It's a little Easter egg. They die nice. Yeah, put green into it pretty yeah. good. Yeah, put them in there green just eggs. like a little Easter. But it seems like candling them would be a good idea to identify the birds that aren't producing. Yeah, but, I, but you wouldn't just retry the same bird, would you? Absolutely. There's it could be various reasons. Maybe like you were just saying at the very beginning of, of, of we were talking. Maybe I had the hen too fat and they couldn't it couldn't connect up right when she first was going. Maybe uh, maybe like on mine, I got this one inch wire that's on my individual cages and she can't sit right in there. They're so having I, a hard time treading. Yeah, I went and put boards in there like we talked about. Give them somewhere to give them somewhere to sit. Steady, stay and, steady. She's footing. Yeah. She's leaning over trying to, and he, he can't get on it. Right. Um, and then maybe in a, in a, in a big loft, like, uh, if you have, you know, 10 breeders in, in one loft, every time he goes to tread the hand, another cock will run over and, and bump him off. Yeah. And, hey, 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 you Seen can't that. do that. They're so, like competitive. Yeah. They don't want to see another he, cock tread a hen. Yeah. He doesn't want to tread her. He just doesn't want you to try. It's yeah. the craziest thing. It's not like he jumps up. Yeah. Jumps her, then jumps up. I've right. even seen hens come out of the woodwork to, to break it up. Oh, have It's like, you? why does she care? <laughs> She's not like, man, there's only so much room in here. If anyone's getting nooky, it ought to be me. It ought to be me. Jealous hands. Yeah. Cox, too. Um, other reasons, uh, like you said, could be health reasons. Um, birds that have had salmonella. Um, they can sometimes have a hard time getting stuff going. Birds that have had, um, what's the other one? Salmonella, they pass to the eggs. And they're going to be a carrier I guess if you're forever. seeing clear eggs enough where it's like you I just feel wanna, it setting you back. I just want to catch it early enough so I'm not wasting. Because in my loft, I'm only going to get two rounds out of you, and then we're done. And if you, if For you, a whole year? Yeah, and i got to wait another year. And then so if you... Uh, and so you got, let's say you got 500 birds... <laughs> and you're going to feed them the whole year. Or 600 like I have. Yeah. 
just to get four babies out of a pair. Yeah. Oh, well, dude. like like your buddy we just came from said, you know. It feels it feels like you're trying never, to be done in get ahead. two months rather than waiting. I mean, who wants babies in June that you're flying in Jul- in September? I enjoy it. I know they're not competitive like those like early hatches. Be, but I'd rather have the wrong age birds out of the right. <laughs> yeah. Genetics. I agree. Um, one time, oh, this is a bad one. You're going to laugh because you know this one. I was using a little bit of Clorox bleach out there, and I diluted it, you know, like, a, I don't know. Like you should. Half a cup, a quarter cup to a gallon of water. But I had that, that, that Clorox bleach in the same waters, the same canister that I had all the That's other water. That's what your water pail looks like. Yes, and I didn't write on there nothing, right? So all of a sudden so I'm watering my birds. which is which. Mm-hmm. I'm watering my birds, and this one bird won't drink. I'm like, what's going on? Every time, I, uh, I kept not fit. I'm like, what? She went like four or five days, and then I realized I had been dumping all the rest. They were having a hard time too, but I've been dumping that solution to all the birds. They were getting. They're getting watered with bleach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's not good. That's not on them, right? That's on me. Yeah, just a whoopsie daisy. And when I, that happened, I thought, well. You know, all these government agencies we have that come out and they want to see, like, whatever chemicals you have all labeled and, oh, right, yeah, you know, eat not whatever they are. Yeah. Uh, and now I, I walked away with a new understanding of why. Of why that's a yeah. good idea. <laughs> like, I should at least write on it. Yeah, there's, what is that, that sheet that goes with the, yeah. they're supposed to have that sheet with all the. Yeah, different stickers. What or you do they, if this and that. Can you imagine a beautiful hen and she only can drink highly concentrated. Yeah. That's just not gonna. That's that's, gonna that's the kind of stuff. Not that it's specifically, but like having a bird that's locked up, it doesn't have the chance to go outside and correct your mistakes. Yeah, correct my yeah. I I get anxious yeah. about that. Like if my breeders smart, are locked yeah. up for more than like three days in a row, I'm thinking like they haven't been able to go drink out of the gutter. They haven't been able to like pick up uh, dirty grain. They haven't been able to take a bath in that dirty puddle. In that dirty puddle. Um, they're not getting any greens out of the sprouts that are coming up all around me. They're not over there on that one dirt pile picking up that beautiful rock you got too on the one side. Yeah, they're not picking up the grit that I left out for them on purpose. I'll do that. I put grit in the driveway because it rains and then the birds are excited about the same old grit. Love that. They're like, oh, this used to be all dusty. Now it's nice. You know what I found to help grit? Because I already said grit just doesn't want to be sitting in there. You leave when it gets dusty. It's not appealing to if them. If you just leave it in there, they'll they just won't keep eating it. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like, like it if, goes stale. If you leave a cup of weed in there and you sit there for three days and you don't feed them anything else, they're going to eat that cup of weed. But with grit, they they just won't they just won't do it. I've been um, taking a little bit of ash from my fire pit and putting it back on the so I've. I'll take that grain or that grit that that they don't want anymore. Uh-huh. Pour it back into, and then put a little bit of that uh, stuff from the fireplace. The little what do you call it? Um, ash, 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 yeah, ash. There you go. Charcoal. Charcoal. That's it. And and then giving it back to them. Um, w- mix them with some other, and it seems like they'll, they'll it like tricks refreshes them. it or something. Maybe they're leaving that same grit. I don't know, maybe I'll have to do a little you test. You do it or again. Something. I'll have to do a little test and see. There was a, I don't know if it was a book or a video, but there was some old boy that talked about putting his old grid out on a rock wall. And then he noticed, like, it was just convenient for him. That's where he just He just it. tossed it on this rock wall. But then it would rain, and he noticed his birds would flock to that wall. Ah. And so it was like rinsing the grid got, hit, got the birds excited about it. And so now I do that in the driveway. I'll toss oh. the old grit. In the same spot in the driveway. And they'll come back to and it. And on a rainy day, the birds are always there picking up their... I want to try that. Their dusty pieces that are now clean again. I'll try that. Instead of putting the ash on them, I'll try the opposite. Just a little bit of water, maybe rinse it off and try it again. Yeah, if you can, put it back in the loft. Yeah. Or you can just have a place out of the loft where they get their grit. Yeah. The birds outside will eat it wherever I throw it. Into that... Uh, the breeders, they'll need it. Yeah. Delivered. They want that yummy stuff. The um, out in the in one of the aviaries is a good place. I know a lot of guys will put a fall through floor on their aviary so the birds can't get to the ground. 
And there's there's um, theories or, or explanations to either way. Mine, mine can get to the ground out there. I kind of like the idea of them having a little more natural stuff. Other guys would say, hey, that's throwing them off because they're picking up a snail egg or a half a worm or, you know, you could, that, that, that's, that's what they would say. But yeah, I'm in the boat of, hey. Dirt won't hurt my birds. Yeah. That's what I figure. They need to have and some if, of that. If dirt knocks them down, then that's not the kind of bird that's I want. That's not the bird you want? I don't want birds that are That's the thing that I love. Wallflowers. That's, that's the Taylor's. Um, not just the Taylor theory, but that's the Taylor system right the there. The attitude. Well, we don't want no scrubs. No. That's not the point. No, I'll drink this other stuff. This is one of our sponsors. That's hard. For, it's hard on your body. You turn it? this way, then they'll never know. You ought to drink something healthier, like just like no, four my, ingredients. No. Hops, water, yeast. <laughs> my pigeons. Malt barley. My, my pigeons get all the bad stuff. If you if you just do water, you're not prepared for that other stuff. You might find out there. Yeah, you at my out. house, at my house, I'm going to give everyone a tip. You will never find anything in the water. Except Ever. The, except except the little worm that falls in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's a little nightcrawler. I had a fish one out the other day from Yeah, the birds. Like they love it. I think there's a robin nest. And my Eve, it, it, yeah, awesome. and they're coming that's to feed babies, awesome. and they yeah. miss, and it lands in there. Nothing wrong with it. It doesn't bother me any. No, if they're drinking out of the gutters on your house, what well, does it matter? That you know, they're yeah, they're coming across germs when they're not stressed. If I go to an, a foreign country, I head down to Mexico, and they tell me not to eat the lettuce because that means I don't have a good enough gut bacteria yeah. to handle what they can. I wish. But yeah, I did. they're eating it left and right. Yeah. I have heard they come to America and have the same problem. They like, go to Burger King or they're whatever. Like, they're like, I'm only used to food. I can only have whatever that have cheese no is made of there. is not food. <laughs> That's true. Plastic cheese. Well, are we signing off? Yeah. Let's. So next video. What should we do for our next video? I don't know. Started some training. Yeah. I think it would be good. I, I, I really, you know, what? when we went through my birds and we found some feathers, what if we created them up, both your team and my team, and just kind of look through what might need to be pulled or what might need to be worked on? Just yeah. kind of something. Let's meet the race team. Yeah, that's it. Meet the race team. Let's give some names. One or two that we could always would like. To Mine have some names. Mine don't have no names. I got your numbers. team's too big. My team. When you have twelve no, birds, it's easy to name them. My team is like being in prison, and they all have numbers. <laughs> yeah, they. Sit, I actually have them. They hold with their little feet. They hold the card and up. They hold this number. Little striped shirts, and they're like, oh. One nine seven three four. Just a number. Yeah. Not a name. <laughs> they take away your name. Give you a number. Give you a number. That's right. Welcome to Todd's Law. <laughs> Welcome to the jail. <laughs> Whatever we do, don't take the blue. Don't off. take the blue off. This says right on the box. Don't. Hey, hey. Careful. All right. Yeah, that was close. Though. All right. That was close. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Tea time. Until next time. See you later. Bye.